Hi guys, welcome back to The Average. Today I am working on a commission by my friend Sean, who is currently running a Kickstarter campaign for her graphic novel Overlord. She asked me to create a print that is going to be one of the rewards in the Kickstarter and I was more than happy to work on this because I think her stuff is so good. It's really hilarious and beautiful and you should go check it out but anyway we'll get more to it. I'm drawing one of the characters in her story called the hero. So basically in her story it's this over the top like um, world where heroes exist and everyone's in competition over each other to be the best hero in the land and I don't know too much about this character because I haven't read the whole thing yet but I have from the previews. I think that she is pretty badass and her whole point of her story is to show how heroes are idolised within the universe that Shan has created. So I think this character is a cool kick-ass woman. I jumped at the chance to draw her so I'm just using watercolor and pencils. What I'm going to do is just chat to Sean now, so let's take it over to that. So I'm here with the creator of Overlord, Sean Jefferson. I really wanted to say Sean Jefferson then. But we know each other, we went to uni together and we met each other on our art foundations and we've basically been doing comics since uh, uni. We both did animation and we were both like meh. And uh, yeah, what, that's true, right, Sean? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much exactly how that played out. And we both like comics now. So Sean's doing her comic Overlord and what you've seen, I probably already discussed this during the video, but is the process of the commission I did for her, which is gonna be part of her Kickstarter rewards, isn't it, Sean? We're doing like a series of guest artist prints and like Steph said we've known each other for oh my god like nearly 10 years now I think it might actually be 10 yeah. years no um, cry <laughs> <laughs> I had just read um, your latest comic Emily is burning and I was already a fan mm. of your stuff anyway and I was like I need her to make a print for this so then I bribed you with money oh yeah well I mean you've got to be a fan of mine because you're my friend <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that's right that's 100% how that works <laughs> We're just going to talk a little bit about your comic because these guys want to know because when I did Emily is Burning everybody was like watching along and they liked getting tips and stuff so do you want to just tell us a little bit about the story and sure. what it's about and the art and stuff? Yeah okay Um. so it's a self-contained graphic novel it's just under 170 pages long and basically the premise of the story is mm. that it's about a guy who accidentally becomes an evil overlord and it just completely snowballs out of control <laughs> it's such a good hook when i first heard that the first line i was like yep mm -hmm. i'm sold i want in on this story and i've actually <laughs> had the privilege of reading a few preview pages and i was basically laughing my off because it was so funny and super sassy and I think the writing style is just really comedic and really lends itself well to the beautiful art and oh, everything. thank you. What made you write the comic? What are your inspirations? I've got those two questions but they kind of go together oh, yeah, so. Fair no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Like, bam, right now. <laughs> uh, although that's yeah. a question that people ask me a lot now that it's live on Kickstarter and I'm kind of like oh my god I need to think of something but realistically uh, the reason that I wanted to write it and what inspired me to write it was partially because I'd already done a short project on this theme and it kind of stuck in my brain mm -hmm. and then more recently I wanted to write something about people not necessarily fitting into boxes or stereotypes because I feel like generally as a society we have all this access to social media and all of this stuff lots of people that I was meeting mm -hmm. at conventions I think they felt under pressure to conform in one way or another regardless of which uh, groups of friends they were hanging out or which parts of society they were engaging. And I could kind of relate because I think, you know, we all do that where we go on social media and look at like the best bits of people's lives and we're like, oh my God, I totally suck and I'm failing at everything. Oh, for sure. And I yeah. like the best way that I could think to write a story about that was to be like, well, everybody grows up with stories of heroes and bad guys, good guys and swords, so many swords. And I thought it would just be really cool to write a story about this over-the-top world where everybody's either good or evil and have somebody who actually doesn't fit into either of those categories and how they 
kind of mm. deal with that and what they decide to do about it because realistically you can't put people into boxes or stereotypes or categories it just doesn't work like historically it doesn't work so it'd be nice if we didn't feel under yeah. the pressure to do that to ourselves i really like that answer that was really yeah. cool i yeah, there you go guys i guess i think especially as artists mm. we'd probably be like a bit misfitty mm. if i dare to yeah. say that <laughs> yeah that's really cool and i i'm really looking forward to seeing like the whole project lots of people who watch yeah. the youtube channel my youtube channel they like comment that they want to make start making comics as well and how to get into it so do you have any tips for beginners um, i mean in terms of practical advice yes because i've been making comics for six years now a lot of it has been trial and error because like you said we did animation at university which was endlessly helpful in lots of areas and then in other areas was just completely useless when it came to the practicalities of making comics but if you're new to making comics and you're a little bit unsure about starting i guess the best piece of advice i can give is to just do it and i know that sounds like a nike commercial so sorry about that but <laughs> you really should just start and it doesn't matter if you think that your art isn't good enough or your writing isn't good enough you don't really know what you're doing because you are going to learn as you go along most comic artists that i know truthfully are just making it up as they go along and it's trial and error um mm. but also the other bit of advice i would give yeah. is that if you're making comics you should make them for yourself make the stories that you want to read and the art that you enjoy because there are over seven billion people on the planet i guarantee you that someone else is going to think that your stuff is good too yeah oh, for sure oh, yeah concerned with what other people totally agree. make a comic for yourself and if you start with you you'll find other people who like your stuff and like what you like as well also go to comic conventions because they're great yeah i would say uh, adding to that is for sure like you need to be inspired by other comics and other artists definitely you should consume what you create is what i really live by moving on you've finished overlord do you have another project coming up next or are you not thought that um, far ahead yet i mean i'd like to say that i haven't thought that far ahead and that i'm just gonna relax and enjoy christmas but i think i might be a bit <laughs> addicted to work so so i've got a couple of ideas that have kind of been sitting on the back burner for a while but i haven't really settled on any specific one yet because Overlord was so long in the making I think it took me about two years to actually get it from concept yeah. to where it is now I think whatever I do next is probably going to be a shorter format like I was literally looking at your comic the other day and I was like Steph has got this right short format comics are the way forward <laughs> so. definitely when you work on a big project it's it's really you feel so good and proud of yourself once you've finished it but it's also nice to do like a smaller thing because it you just feel that same accomplishment and yeah you should yeah. definitely do a few short stories or something yeah next, i maybe. think as well on some levels i have something to prove to myself because pretty much everything that i've done so far with the exception of overlord because it is self-contained everything i'd done up until that point sort of in issues i kind of need to prove to myself that i can do something <laughs> short format Oh, you definitely can. If you've done it long, like a massive project, you can do a shorter one. It's just, I felt like the same. I get a bit carried away when I do projects. I'm like, I always get carried away and make them bigger yeah. than they need to be. So when I did the horror comic, I was really like, no, cut that out, edit that out. Like, you just have to be really yeah. strict like with yourself. Because I was like, I could see this going massively on forever. But if I just make it like I swear to myself, yeah. no, no, <laughs> you can definitely do it. You should be really proud of what you've accomplished so far and it's really exciting and I bet everybody who's discovering your art through this channel and stuff is going to be really excited to see what you produce next and we all can't wait to get a hand on the copy of Overlord for sure I'm Amazing. so excited so guys check out Sean's <laughs> check out Sean's Kickstarter down below um, I think it's finishing on Wednesday uh, is it? But you know what I don't know what day that is but I do know it is the 20th of October and I'm pretty sure it finishes at 11am so hurry up guys, go grab your copy. Oh, I want to show Sean my commission and see what her thoughts are in the, in the end. Stephanie has sent you something. <laughs> oh, what? That looks amazing. Oh my God. I don't know if she is a big yeah. part of your story, but I think she's obviously important she, yeah, to the she's, story. Um, so. She's very important to the story, but um, I'm 
secretly feeling really, really awesome. pleased that you did this uh, with watercolors because it looks so good. Oh my god! I'm glad you like it. Yeah, this is so beautiful looking. I wanted to do like a sort of pose that we you see yeah. in like a tarot card, maybe, and like sort of accentuate that, like the hero of the journey. And I thought because from what I got from the preview is that yeah. she's kind of a legend, so maybe this could be like stuff somebody else has created within the story to oh, be like look yeah. it's the hero you know you totally She's beautiful. Yeah, like you totally <laughs> nailed it because she really is like that kind of idealized character is why nobody actually knows her name because they're like oh you know she's like the hero and it's like oh, great she, she was a real person oh. she's become <laughs> legendary now so it looks so great i'm so excited mm. yeah i'm so glad it's you like amazing, it dude. okay well that's it for me and sean and please guys go check out her comic overlord down below it is 166 pages long which is crazy long and it's you know a really reasonable price as well for a big chunk of book that you're gonna get for your money so go check it out and you'll also get my print maybe if you want it and you get the rewards and everything come on guys let's all go and yeah that's it so bye. say bye sean <laughs> thanks for uh, coming on sean all right guys uh i will see you later